Most of life and the best of life happen when politicians butt out and let us create order as we choose. People think of order like a military march. Everyone dum, 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 marching in order. But a lot of the order that we see wasn't invented by someone or imposed. The Atlas Network's Tom Palmer points out that just as a school of fish needs no leader, most of us in most of life just figure things out on our own. Spontaneous order, this Chinese philosopher called it. Economist Frederick Hayek added that order results not from design, but spontaneously. What's going on, everyone? It's Talks to Kenny here today, and we'll be kind of breaking down the concept of spontaneous order. This is due to my uh, belief about the inconvenient truths about government is that it, for the most part, when government power increases, individual freedom decreases, right? And there's always this offsetting that, in my mind, goes uh, goes on when government exerts more control, more regulation. This is why I'm in favor of less regulation is because the fact is that the, the more centralized a power is, the more, I guess, inefficient and clunking it is, right? It doesn't, like he said, spontaneous order, things doesn't happen by human design. No one invented language from scratch and then everyone adopted it. No, like this is a intellectual's fever dream. Oh, I have this great idea. It's going to be spread across the world. No, because end of day, wisdom of the crowd. People want to see it. It's like, hey, it doesn't really apply on my situation. It doesn't work, right? And you're going to see throughout uh, examples in this video that how every, every attempt at top-down order, which is what government is good at, it seems to cause it, it, the outcome seems to be worse off than if government just left it alone. And that's kind of the inconvenient truth about government is that essentially it only works off of wanting control over something. Now, as a conservative, I do believe in some government, but in a limited capacity, right? In a, in I've been my political philosophy is that the government is more of a referee, more of a maintainer than it is a interventionist, uh, improver, because nothing really improves with uh, government control, right? What what politicians know about business? What politician knows about order, right? I think on the local level, specific laws should be more than the federal level. Because the federal level, I think we give it too much power while being so separated from the, from the common individual, right? How I look at the list of priorities is I believe a state government should have more influence over your life than the federal government. The federal government it should act more of a as a general template for all the states to follow. Hey, here's a constitution. All the states must must require to have this. That's the only thing I, I I would like to accept a general guideline. But hey, I digress. Let's go into this next clip where we'll get more into the spontaneous order concept, and I'll give you some of my views at the end of this clip. Let's check a look. Let's take a look. Sorry. And that's how we get most everything: food, music, travel. Think about the spontaneous order on a road. Everyone going all their different directions. Right. Look at all these people. Old, young, smart, dumb, some super dumb. And yet, even though we're going pretty fast, people rarely smash into each other. You need some rules. Oh, absolutely. Rules like pass on the left. But for the most part, people work this out on our own. Think about language. No one invented language. Yet the world has thousands. Many times, experts tried to create one new one so we could better communicate. There's Volapuk and Esperanto. How many people speak these languages? Almost no one. There's all these attempts. They're not fail. helpful. It is Irisvinkaya. William Shatner made a movie using Esperanto. It is Santistin. It failed too. Esperanto failed because language evolves spontaneously. And it is always superior to top-down systems that rely on the information in one brain. It, this is always what gets me about like centralized planners. Like this is where socialism, communism, this is where we get into these concepts. Is that socialism and communism only benefits either a single individual, aka a king, or uh, a small group of individuals who want control over society because they want... I guess society to bend to their will, right? And this is where people have a problem with the World Economic Forum because we believe, hey, you're an interest group. Interest, group, interest groups shouldn't be given power to unilaterally decide what billions of people do on this planet and how billions of people live on this planet. 
because they're small fish and it is a small minority group right if you got if if people get mad at russian oligarchs for having so much power and influence over their country why would uh, uh individuals like me be comfortable with a group of politicians media uh elites having uh be able to dictate what happens globally like it's the same concept it's just in, in a wider scale of effect right and some of the examples i have for when uh, with centralized planning is let's take the idea of racial disparities for instance right I, i'm reading a book uh with uh when race trumps merit and in the book there's a specific example that the the author points out about how uh there's racial any disparities in uh, medical school right and how people are like oh it's due to uh racial bias is why black uh, black and hispanic medical students don't perform well in um the mcat right so the author brings up some stats about the mcat how in the mcat the white white and asian students tend to score in the 77th percentile i was like damn guess what the average uh, test scores for a black and hispanic medical student falls under the 36th percentile now DEI, which is centralized control and uh, the American Medical Association, they felt bad about this result. They're like, oh my God, we don't like this outcome. This outcome is racism. So what does the centralized power decide to do? Oh, let's remove the test. Let's make it pass or fail. Let's not make it a requirement for admissions into medical school. So now as a patient myself, as a black person, right? I'm a black person, right? If I found out, hey, medical school stops giving out the MCAT. And I remember the last documented result was white and asian students in medical school scored seven at the 77th percentile if you don't know what a percentile is that means these students perform better than 77 percent of people who, who usually takes that test while black and hispanic medical students only perform 36 percent better than so that means they're whoa, yo that means yo there's a big disparity there so i believe the, the the culture in the community does not set up black and hispanic medical students for academic success they don't arm them with academic skills this is this is how I would explain the disparity. It's behavior, not race. But you know, these people think it's race. So these centralized people decide, hey, we're gonna take the the what's gonna happen in medical school 20, 30 years from now? People are gonna start discriminating against black and Hispanic medical students because we're gonna be like, you might be a diversity hire. I don't trust you with my life. Because now when the stakes are high, all this virtue signaling, it dies. All right. And this is what happens because you don't allow experimentation. Hey, how about let's test a different way? How about it's not the test? How how, how about we train medical? Uh, how about we get to the uh, we train younger black students in high school and in college to have better academic skills? And maybe that will change the gap. No, 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 no. If you challenge the orthodoxy of racial disparity equals racism, you are a racist and we'll fire you. This is what happened when centralized control happens. Right. You get groupthink. You get conformity. You don't get exper experimentation. This is one of the reasons why I want privatized education is because privatized education allows experimentation. And with experimentation comes what? Innovation, improvements. And you can't have that under a centralized power. This is why government is ineffective at uh, instituting change. It, change will happen at the local level, not at the government level. But I digress. Let's look into this next clip where he'll give some examples of spontaneous order and some examples of how what happens when government decides to pull back let's take a look this is central park millions mingle here if the park is beautiful and safe now only because government let go a little my city government used to manage the park and when it did it looked like this graffiti covered monuments trash was everywhere grass was a wasteland of dust then the city agreed to let a private nonprofit manage the park Without a government order, people came together, giving money and time to turn the park around. Now Central Park is beautiful, and without lots of rules, things work. Leave a donation right here. Musicians thrive on donations, and although there are many, they figure out how to stay out of each other's way. The jazz this group plays is another form of spontaneous order. There's no one demanding you have to play this note. Order emerges as the jazz players are going along in spontaneous form. Likewise, skate dancers spontaneously chose the spot where they meet to skate. How do we make sure they don't bump into each other? Honestly, there's no rules. No one tells them where to go. 
you just skate with the flow of the music. You gotta bring your skates next time. Yeah, see, people are having fun, clean. They uh, People took responsibility over their area. And this is one of the biggest arguments that I have for less regulation of healthcare, uh, healthcare insurance as well, is because of the fact that there's a, there's a theory, and I think it's been proven valid by this example that uh, John Stolzer uh, points out, is that back then in the 1920s, if I remember correctly, insurance people used to have community based like association based insurance where if you're a part of the freemasons for instance you got health care through the freemasons you got retirement through the freemasons and you all you had to do was pay a membership fee the same way that we pay into our health care insurance with our employer our health care used to be tied to an association so me let's say you're my neighbor and in my neighborhood in my suburban area if all 400 of us decide all 400 families decide hey we want, we want to create an association uh, membership here, and we have to pay this much. It, technically, that's what an HOA is, right? The people who we put as the board of our association, hey, Kenny is the board of directors of the Freemasons for Florida, right? That's my association's name. I get to, on the behalf of my association, and day I live in that community. Hey, Kenny, I didn't like the terms you argued for us, man. We, we should get better terms, just like a labor union, right? For some reason, the left understands this, but they don't understand that private citizens can essentially do the same thing and get a health care plan specifically for our community, right? And who's going to know what's best for my community? A member like me who actually lives in the community or some bureaucrat in Washington, D.C., in another state that has no inclination or no understanding about how health is effective here in Florida by this private property, right? Because end of the day, the, the, the community park, when the government ran it, it was a lot less clean, a lot less appealing. Hell, it made a lot less revenue than when a private entity managed it. Because why? The private entity entity has a, a want and a need to maintain it. I'm going to maintain my house a lot better than maintaining a public space, right? I see, I live in an HOA community. Our community bathrooms is clean. That, that's because our HOA pays for it, right? Because we have skin in the game. When you don't have skin in the game, you don't care. Oh, it ain't my car. I don't care if it got a dent on it. But what if it's the community car and you and your HOA pays to repair that community car? Oh, you're going to make sure it's taken care of. Hey, it's not clean. Why y'all ain't cleaning this? Y'all ain't taking HOA from me because uh, and y'all don't keep this thing clean. Hey, the gates are broken. Why the gate is broken? You need to fix the gate. My HOA, y'all take HOA from us. You got to fix the gate because I have skin in the game. I'll care about my community a lot more than if I didn't have skin in the game. Oh, the government take care of the gate? Oh, okay. It's broken for the fifth time in the world. Oh, who cares, right? This is why private business give you better service than uh, government-run entities, right? I'm just saying, when you make a comparison, you see the outcome is a lot better when the government's not involved. Now, government has limited capacity. I believe that. Like, in a limited, specific role, government is A1. Oh, foreign policy? Oh, you got it. Maintaining our borders? Oh, you got it. Maintaining law and order? You got it. Enforcing law and order? Hey, you got it. Hey, that's, that's the government's job. But most time, most of the time, mm -mm. government are not is not effective at actually giving outcomes that they claim they they want to give to private citizens. And I think if Americans understand this a lot better, they'll have a lot more realistic expectations of the government, right? But hey, I digress. Let's look at this last example that John Stoltz has for us during COVID and see how even the most uh, most regulated states like New York realize that they need to pull back or else. Their tax dollars are going to be at risk. Let's take a look. Three but politicians want to control more things. Resolution 704. My town has a zillion rules. Want a restaurant and want to offer a few outdoor tables? No! Mom. Until recently, the city forced you to get permission from how many people? Nine or 11 agencies to get a sidewalk cafe. Nine or 11 agencies? This restaurant owner can't remember all of them. It was the Department of Buildings, the Fire Department, the Liquor Authority, the City Council, the Controller's Office. On and on and on. You had to get a lawyer, you had to get an architect, but it literally takes you a year. But during COVID, they relaxed the rules. These sheds suddenly appeared. They would have never been allowed. Because they were allowed, streets came alive. They loosened the rules. They did it really quick, which is so unusual for the city. If they hadn't done it, if they hadn't done it, we'd be closed. Without an epidemic, this is simply not allowed. You'd 
pay such big fines you'd lose your business. We need that flexibility to allow people to experiment. That freedom to experiment brings the best in life. Medical innovation, spaceships, things we can't even imagine yet. More politicians should learn from Central Park. And I can't believe I'm saying this, New York City's politicians, who during COVID let go a little. Cheers! Cheers. And like I said, regulation is just control. It doesn't, like, end of the day, to me, as a, a government, a government needs to justify why it needs to regulate. Oh, we need to, because it, it comes across very paternalistic, right? And as someone who is big on personal responsibility, I'm a responsible adult. I always been a responsible kid, always had a good head on my shoulders. That's, at least that's what my mom tells me, right? And when I get this need of people saying, oh, can you need to learn how to save your money? I'm like, I know how to do that already. I invest my money too. Like I'm not relying on social security to like, I don't, I'm not like, I'm at the point and I'm a millennial, 27 years old. I'm not relying on social security for my uh, retirement. I have investment accounts. I have multiple investment accounts because I know retirement is going to be in my hands. Right. But the fact that I'm paying, you know, taxes for other people's retirement who statistically you ain't going to be able to live off of. And that's a topic for another day because end of the day, Government, government wants control because it, it needs to feel needed, right? Like the, guy, the business owner said, 11, you need to go through 11 jurisdictions for what? All you're doing is opening a restaurant. Okay, food commissions, maybe you can justify that. But building codes and all that, like, yo, it doesn't make no sense. Like, you can get in trouble for having a lemonade stand in New York. Like, that, that's baffling to me, right? How is that economically free? No, it's just you just want to be hall monitor, right? You just want to feel needed. <laughs> I don't know, bro. It comes across as, hey, people can't think for themselves, therefore we got to think for them. And I think a system that doesn't understand human nature is, is doomed to fail, right? What, look at the COVID. The only reason they relaxed, they knew what, at the like, end of the day, it took, a, it took a pandemic for them to realize, hey, we're slowing down business economic activity in our state. We need to boost that. Okay, how do we boost that? By pulling back. They already knew. They knew what the formula was, but they just didn't want to because they could afford to. They could afford to add nonsensical regulation on top of businesses because they know people are going to stay here. People going to be here. And we, we chilling like in California. Oh, people going to come here. Right. And then what happened? People move with their feet. And then they realize, oh, Stu, God forbid the rich leave. Because it, it, like I said before in, my, in previous videos, almost 90, what, 80 percent of your tax revenue comes from your top 20 percent of taxpayers in your state and in your country. So that means if the top 20% of taxpayers who is more able to leave your state than the lower half, if they decide to leave, you take a big tax hit. So they're like, oh no, we can't afford that. Let's loosen up regulation. So that way the businesses can are better able to cope with COVID, right? Only when the government suffers something personally does it make the correct decision. But when it, but when it needs to make a correct decision on behalf of its citizens, it doesn't. Because there's a conflict of interest there. Government only wants control. And that's the inconvenient truth. Let me know what your guys' thoughts uh, in the comment section below. Do you like spontaneous order? Do you like centralized centralization? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys on the next inconvenient truth. Peace.